Africa, the cradle of civilization. Africa has a colorful and unique landscape filled with natural beauty and historical sites. It also boasts 54 individual countries in over 2,000 languages and dialects, plus a massive collection of cultural diversities. Tourism is on the rise in Africa. It is becoming the place to see. People are now aware that tourism is a boom to the economy. Attitudes are changing and nature is becoming a commodity. To show off what many people outside of the continent long to explore, culture, animals, natural habitat, scenic sites, and the people that live there. To see something that is ordinary for one person can be extraordinary for another person, even as simple as clouds. Like many continents, Africa is seeing its forests disappear, its lakes shrink, and its glaciers recede. Tourists, ecologists, researchers, and governments are also aware of this alarming trend. With this all considered, I would like to take you to a peaceful little country in Southeast Africa. Introducing the Republic of Malawi. It has been dubbed the warm heart of Africa. And the 2016 Global Peace Index ranks Malawi as the sixth most peaceful country in Africa. So after you are done in the city and have seen the local hospitality, hopped a ride on a kabaza and have ridden the Red Village Roads, have experienced a local event, been in a tuk-tuk, visited the organized confusion of the local bus depot, seen something that you've never seen before, and just need a break from all the madness of the city, head north, past Mizuzu, past Karanga, and this is what Misuku Hills in the north offers you. Masugu Hills Forest Reserve hosts Masuzu coffee and Masuzu honey. It has a major key in Malawi's biodiversity and climate and ecotourism in the north. The hills are comprised of many forest blocks, which make up a staggering 2,768 hectares. Malawi wishes to make life for its people better, yet like many African countries, it has its challenges. It's a key biodiversity area, uh, which has a huge potential for tourism. But unfortunately, Misugu Hills is underdeveloped in sense of uh, at the moment there is only one uh, infrastructure which is uh, owned by the Nzuzu Coffee Cooperatives. In terms of infrastructure, you find that less tourists come and visit Misugu. So it as a tourist destination or the income tourism brings to Misugu Hills is uh, more or less negligible to the people that uh, live around Misugu. As a result, they don't take pride in uh, conserving the environment. But uh, we thought it, if we could increase the number of tourists coming to Misugu, uh, the economic value that people gain from Misugu Hills, that economic value will increase. Uh, as such, it, uh, it will lead also into an increase in uh, the interest for, for the people to conserve the environment. Beekeepers have taken a great interest in conserving the environment. Production of natural indigenous honey has decreased by 70% due to deforestation. Beekeepers in their clubs are boasting 1,500 beekeepers. These members are working with Forestry to help manage blocks in the forest. Yet one of the key challenges that the association still faces includes corruption. Certain government authorities give illegal logging licenses to traders who give them bribes. The loggers cut down huge trees without the consent of the communities. Honey has been a source of food, income, nutrition, and medication for the indigenous Sukwa tribe in the Masuku Hills. And honey hunting is now facing new challenges. The Mizuzu Coffee Planters Cooperative Unit is comprised of five primary cooperatives in northern Malawi. Masuku Hills is the largest of this cooperative. Over 50% of the coffee is grown in Masuku Hills region, and in 2009 they became fair trade certified. The coffee plantations in the area are nestled into the hills with respectful boundaries. It is this respect the locals give to the forest that give rise to new ideas. My name is Ovatoni Msopore. I'm, I'm living in Chinongo village, close to Mugese forest. I know the four languages. 
English, Chichewa, Tumbuka, and Lambia. I want to be a true guy because I met a new people, which I will, they teach me to know the new culture, to know more about the forestry and the Sorai. Yeah, yeah. If, if somebody comes, if a tourist is interested in culture, for example, Misuk Hills is one of the best places to be. You might have heard that we have got about 21 languages here. That tells you how diverse the culture is here. So if somebody comes here to say, I would like to experience the culture, then this is the better place to be. Uh, if somebody just wants to come and enjoy uh, ber birds, for example, there are those that travel just to see birds. Misuk Hills has that potential, you see? Butterflies, yeah, you see? Uh, like yesterday, we went to uh, one of the forests around, eh? Muende Forest. It's one of the beautiful places to be. And um, of course, I've not seen it myself, but according to the locals here, there is a, a type of a monkey, a special one. It's in the group of the galigos. But here it's special because they are dwarfs, you know, dwarf galigos, and this is the only place that you can see. So. You, you talk of uh, coffee, coffee processing. The process itself is quite fantastic to watch. You talk of bananas, you talk of avocado pears, you find them all here. So this, in a nutshell, uh, this is just one of the best places that a person can be uh, in terms of tourism. But like I said, there these main two challenges that we have. The first one is the road itself. The second one is the accommodation unit. The roads are reasonable and the ride is long. Upgrades to the roads include pavement on steep sections of the road where, when it rains, one would have trouble getting up, and reinforced sections of the road where soil erosion is an issue has also been done. The views are lush, the clouds are low and mystical, and the ride is captivating. Accommodation, although not formally there, will come as you do. Malawians are ready to help you enjoy what they have. Professor Simon Bearder is a professor and field researcher at Oxford in the UK. He researches Galagos in Musuku Hills, and this is what he wrote April 2017. Forests such as Cholo and Calloway and Musuku are, or were, the last remaining of their kind, and are of vital importance as catchment areas and in the influencing of rainfall patterns locally. They are scientifically very important in housing endemic species to Malawi, that are, as of yet, little known. The forests of Calo and Chiolo have already been clear felled on spurious grounds, and it is very worrying that Musuku may follow. People have to live. They need to warm their homes, cook their food, and feed themselves. When tourists visit the area, we help them realize that the place they live in is special, and it is, and people will come just to see the hills and will want to explore. This creates opportunities for the local people to show them that the forest can also help them live. This was caught unexpectedly as I was taking a walk in the hills. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this forest is protected by villagers. Uh, conservation of uh, Misuku conservation okay. of forest. We are very serious to see this forest. We don't want to destroy this forest. Everyone is look for this forest. Okay. One, we don't fear for uh, uh, rainfall. Every year we have rainfall. Yes. Everything is grew here. Everything. We are very lucky. That's why we are too serious to see this forest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeo, yeo. I'm Stephen Mola. Thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you, Stephen. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Do This There is potential in tourism. It's our duty as tourism officers to let them know, to, let, to tell them the... the, the the, the, the importance of this place, the capacity that this place has. So it is our duty to educate people, 
uh, to tell them how potential this place is. That's what we need to do. But that, uh, like I always say, tourism is not a one-man show. Uh, all of us need to work together to achieve a uh, one common goal. Yeah, so together I think we can do everything. Msuku Hills is a work in progress. The government has to enforce a total no logging ban on this forest, where they are losing up to one kilometer a year to logging. It must be stopped. Most of the local realize that the hills themselves have value as a forest and not as a parking lot. This is why the people of Musuku Hills and Malawi are inviting everyone that has a conscience, a warm heart of their own, to see this last rare gem. Researchers come help define and catalog species that are here. It seems new ones are being found to this day. Ecologists come and study and help engineers put in responsible, low-impact roads and structures. Investors help create responsible opportunities for local so that the many tourists that will visit are made to feel comfortable and welcome. And this rare gem will survive as tourism thrives within it. And for those that cannot visit but still want to help, I would love to put a donate button here. Perhaps that will be done soon in some other way. Masuku Hills is one of the most luxuriant forests I have ever visited. It is a must-see. With all this in mind, I only have one question and one question only for you. When are we going back?